Julian. Great pleasure to have you with us. Um, Julian is a veteran, a real veteran of the consulting and the port industry uh, with over 22 years of experience. And prior to joining Identic Solutions, um, he held positions actually at MERS client, uh, APM Terminal, uh, but also Navis and ABB. And he's actually just like Jan and Bart, he's a real technology enthusiast. And in his career, Julian has personally actually visited over uh, more than 155 container terminals, I believe, or at least container handling facilities in, the, in more than 52 countries. And actually in order to gain a better understanding of, of the challenges and, and discuss how technological solutions could solve them, um, Identec and Julian will tell a little bit more about uh, about what this from an integrator perspective and what they can do with the positioning nowadays. Um, so Julian, it's my uh, pleasure to give you the controls. Um, take it away. Great. Thank you, Steph. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I don't want anyone to think I'm old. Uh, 22 years experience, but I started when I was uh, 10 years old with Merce Klein. So uh, just to clarify. Uh, I'm not that uh, old. Um, so I, you've heard today from Jan uh, and you, you've heard from Bart uh, a little bit of kind of setting up the problem. You know, what are some of the challenges that the terminals face? What is, what's some of the hardware and some of the technology that's available? Uh, what I wanted to get into today uh, as my presentation is kind of tell you uh, how uh, Identic Solutions uh, ties that all in. Uh, and in particular, focus on one aspect of, of the solution that can meet some of the challenges, some of the operational challenges, which what we call twist lock control. So uh, first of all, for, for any of you joining the call that may be unfamiliar with Identic Solutions, uh, we're a service provider uh, that uh, offers a solution called Terminal Tracker. Uh, and ter Terminal Tracker has many, many features, and Terminal Tracker leverages positioning technology, as, as Bart mentioned, uh, such as INS, GNSS, uh, RTLS, uh, along with uh, RFID technology, uh, and in combination with uh, what we call PLC interfaces uh, and software uh, to deliver many um, functions for our customers. Uh, that That is... Um, can can vary and and usually can begin if you want it's a modular system uh, at the gate uh, whereby we provide RF tech, uh, tags uh, to the trucks that uh, are then leveraged at the gate to help speed up the transaction uh, to identify the truck driver details and information which make those transactions go uh, smoother faster uh, that same tag then when the uh, truck arrives in the yard, for example, on a receival of the export tra type uh, transaction. That same tag is leveraged in the yard uh, and it communicates with uh, the legs of an RTG, with the legs of a reach stacker, whatever container handling equipment you may have at your terminal, uh, to identify that job, to identify what container is laden on that truck uh, and what transaction is there. In turn, what we achieve by doing that is we eliminate the need for the operator to be looking at screens, looking for uh, what job has just shown up uh, to be serviced. Uh, we, do some, we do something called job promotion, uh, where we verify that information and we send that job to the top of the list so the guesswork is eliminated. So immediately uh, our customers are seeing benefit because their, their operations uh, people are not spending time looking to see what container is there, what job it is they need to select. Uh, once that job is selected, once that container is locked into, uh, once that container is put in the stack, uh, we leverage the positioning technology uh, along with a PLC interface to identify what position that container has been put in in the stack. Uh, and we update and automatically inform the TOS system uh, of that position. It happens in milliseconds, uh, thanks to uh, partners like Septentrio, you know, who's a trusted partner in, in the um, hardware th that provides uh, some of the geo positioning uh, to identify the yard block. Uh, we get the XY coordinate through an interface with the PLC. We send that information automatically. So in, in that case, terminals are eliminating uh, manual errors where they're keying in positions incorrectly, uh, avoiding uh, possibly containers being put in the wrong spots or in, in the system. 
uh, and many times eliminating the need for location clerks that need to go back and correct positions, our customers are getting 100% uh, inventory accuracy. Um, along those same lines, we have what we call twist lock control. And what twist lock control does is we detect if the operator is not in the correct position, in the position that we have planned in that toss for that container move, we will not allow the twist locks to disengage from the container. Uh, in turn, what that does is prevent what are known as illegal moves. Uh, when I first started uh, in this space and offering this solution, I thought it was all about inventory accuracy, faster throughput. But as it, as it comes to turn out, and that's what I want to talk about today, is that this uh, twist lock control is extremely important. Uh, and, and I'm going to get into why, uh, which is basically has to do with drug trafficking. Um, in, in, recent, in the recent 24 months, um, it has been a very violent period in history uh, in par parts of South America, for example. Uh, the Mexican cartel, Colombian cartel, and even Albanian cartel from, from Europe, from the Balkans region, have infiltrated uh, ports. In the, there's, there's evidence uh, of this activity in, in Santos, Brazil. There's evidence of this in Ecuador. Um, ports are put in the forefront of this uh, war on drugs, uh, if you will. Uh, sometimes the goods uh, make their way into containers uh, before they arrive the terminal. Sometimes the, the containers are compromised once they're inside of the terminal gated facility. Uh, so it's no secret that you know, drugs are a big business, um, $230 billion annually in retail value, uh, and that ports are at the forefront of this. Uh, it is on ports to make put forth their best effort uh, to comply with authorities, uh, to show uh, entities such as the U.S. government and uh, U.S. Customs that uh, they are complying with uh, regulations, that they are compliant or with a, a partnership called the CPTAT, uh, for in instance, whereby they must show authorities in the U.S that they take the necessary measures uh, to take drug trafficking seriously and take security and safety uh, very important. They must comply with certain regulations. So, um, for example, in, in Ecuador, I have been approached uh, in, in, in the recent years um, and looking at twist lock control as a possible uh, tool to be used in the fight against this. Uh, what ends up happening uh, is that uh, operators are compromised, they're asked to move empty containers or sometimes loaded containers, put them in what they call dark corners of the yard, uh, have the containers loaded with drugs, uh, and then uh, those containers end up in the streets uh, in, in the U.S. and in Europe and in other markets. Um, it, it's very important for these smugglers to maintain uh, kind of the, the stealth, uh, not be seen, not be heard. Uh, but sometimes workers are caught in the in the crossfires of this. Uh, so the first uh, thing uh, is they may approach an operator and, and ask them for a favor, ask them to move a, a, a box. And the, the system, without any control, without any positioning technology, without any twist lock control, will allow that. Uh, and then it's very difficult to for the terminal uh, container handling facility to have an audit trail uh, if those containers are later discovered to have some sort of contraband. Uh, so the use of twist lock control uh, kind of engineers that problem out of existence. Uh, and the goal there for, for the customers uh, using this technology in, in Ecuador is that they may not be approached in the first place. Uh, basically that the system has a control in place that wouldn't allow them to perform these illegal moves. Um, as I mentioned before, it has been a uh, very uh, violent um, 24 months for some of these uh, terminals. Uh, I have one customer that uh, has experienced uh, 14 directly or indirectly uh, homicides, murders, uh, where people are caught in the crosshairs of this um, activity. So for the industry, there are basically two options. Uh, you may have heard from other uh, seminars, from other press releases, um, 
the invention or the creation of kind of the smart container uh, that can have be equipped with sensors that can detect uh, movements that can detect the doors opening that can detect the uh, uh, digital seals um, that's one option but it's very very expensive because every single unit it, it requires a big investment from the lines uh, and the second option is what I described right is a positioning system uh, that can prevent those illegal moves uh, that can, with the use of twist lock control, won't allow a box to be placed or dropped in an area where it's not planned. Uh, every single physical move that happens in the yard has to match what the virtual plan is in the TOS system. So uh, it is very critical. Uh, that's what I wanted to raise awareness of today, uh, that it really goes beyond just positioning. Uh, positioning is very important and crucial, of course, uh, but uh, as, as terminal operators, you have to take a holistic approach uh, and look at the entire um, e ecosystem uh, and determine where is the, the, the pain point for such a, a thing, you know, where is it that your uh, terminal uh, is having issues, uh, and this is certainly one uh, that has been brought to light uh, in recent time in, in, in South America and parts of Asia, uh, very important and very critical as they're in the crosshairs. Um, so Jan mentioned a little bit uh, about safety, um, you know, and, and the positive impact of positioning technology and safety. This is certainly uh, one uh, to consider as well. Um, the safety of personnel, uh, the, the way the situation is right now for some of my customers, uh, some of you may be joining today from, from other terminals. Uh, next time you think, you know, you, you're having a difficult day, Remember that some of my customers in, in South America, the safety manager, the operations manager, are walking the yard in, in bulletproof vests uh, because of the situation, uh, because they're seen as the enemy, as the person trying to hinder uh, some of these cartels uh, doing what they want to do. Um, it, it, November of last year, uh, they I have one customer that found uh, seven kilos inside of a reefer container that was reported to the authorities. Uh, the next day, uh, someone on a motorcycle came and dropped off a bag uh, at the front gate uh, of the facility. Uh, it was later discovered that it was a human head, a, a severed uh, head from a person. So um, this is this is very very important. Uh, it, it's 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 certainly not going to cure uh, everything. Uh, they will find other ways. They always do. Uh, unfortunately, the, the intelligence and, you know, the use of submarines, you name it, uh, if you watch the news, right? Uh, but um, this is certainly one aspect where they can make it more difficult uh, and force uh, these smugglers an alternative route uh, and potentially uh, make the port less of a target and to leave the port alone and find other ways. Uh, so, that's what I wanted to uh, kind of mention today, bring to your attention, and I look forward to any questions. Thank you, Julian. That was great, actually. Um, great link, actually, to the to some challenges of, of, of Jan, and also great to see what, what GNSS can GNSS can enable, actually, uh, in terms of uh, event, in terms of uh, challenges and, and can solve solutions which were never considered in the beginning.